Number one, skip Starbucks. Now your daily trip to the coffee shop costs you easily $4 on the low end. And to make things worse, you end up drinking your very expensive brew out of a paper cup that's lined with plastic. So you're sipping copious amounts of phthalates and bisphenols, which disrupt your hormones and increase your risk of cancer. Instead, I highly recommend to use a stainless steel coffee maker like this one here. Now it has to be stainless steel, so don't get aluminum. I don't like that very much. There's different reasons for that. I did a video about that. But stainless steel is absolutely fine. It's inert. This makes two full coffee cups of either espresso or coffee, whatever you want to put in there. And that's really very strong. It's a really good amount. It's easy to make. And it's just stainless steel. There is a thin silicone uh, seal in here, but it's not in contact with the fluid on the inside. And I prepare this at night. And then you know, in the morning, put it on the stove, and it's ready within a couple of minutes. So this is actually very easy to do. And again, saves you time, saves you money. And this is a very good quality of coffee. And it's much better than anything you can get from any of those coffee stores. Number two, prepare two protein shakes in the morning. Now, one with breakfast and one for the afternoon. I usually have mine around 3 p.m., which is between my lunch and my dinner. And that's actually very important because that's the time where most people have cravings for junk food and all that. Having a big protein shake at that time, and I put some flax seeds, I put some uh, frozen strawberries, frozen, frozen blueberries, so make this a really thick shake, like a meal replacement really, gives you a lot of satiety, right? Protein makes you full and it really decreases your cravings for junk that people have around that time. So this helps a lot. My dinner is then very controlled and small later, but um, having these two shakes also gives you a good amount of protein for the day because it's really hard to meet your protein needs and protein is expensive. Even protein from protein shakes is not cheap. And I usually recommend a whey protein. Um, it should be very natural. It shouldn't contain any artificial sweeteners. Small amounts of natural sweeteners like stevia, xylitol is okay. Or if you're vegetarian or vegan, then pea protein is okay. But I wouldn't use any other plant protein. Now, even with pea protein, be a bit cautious. I would really do your research there because um, a lot of the plant-based proteins have a high amount of heavy metals and toxins and herbicides, pesticides in there. So you really got to go with a very good quality brand, right? But getting your protein from these shakes helps tremendously. Now, some people will argue when you watch YouTube videos, oh, you can get all your protein from meat. And true, that's right. But first of all, I wouldn't like to eat that much meat. Um, I do eat meat, but that's quite a bit. It's very expensive. I think it's more expensive than a protein powder. Um, also, meat has with it quite a bit of fat, especially when it comes to beef. Now, chicken breast will be a bit leaner, but the fat that's in there, when you think about it, chickens are usually fed corn and soy. That means there's a lot of omega-6 linoleic acid in their fatty tissue and you're eating that. So it's not the best uh, food. Again, small amounts are fine, absolutely, and I do eat that. But getting all your protein from that, I see as a bit problematic, right? So again, making those shakes helps greatly to get your daily protein needs. Now, if you're um, healthy, in my opinion, you can consume roughly 0.8 gram per pound of ideal body weight. There's not medical advice. Always ask your primary care doctor if you're healthy to eat a high protein diet because some people cannot take in that much protein. I go a bit higher than that. I usually go for one gram of uh, uh, protein per pound of body weight per day. Um, you know, fairly easy to do this way because with the protein shakes, you can get, you can get up there easily and you don't consume a lot of fats and carbs with that. Number three, take your lunch with you. And I do this every day. So if you go out for lunch frequently, you may have noticed that, you know, your wallet is shrinking a lot faster now because things have become very expensive. Restaurants have raised their prices. And also, you don't never know what you're getting there. They're cooking usually with uh, soybean oil and canola oil. So the quality is not great. You're waiting for a long time. So you're wasting time, wasting money. I don't think that's a great idea. If you prepare your own food and you take it with you, you know what's what's in your food. It's a lot cheaper and a lot cleaner. Um, so I'm going to show you kind of my typical lunch that I'm preparing. Um, but besides that, you can usually cook for several days. You know, when I make, for example, you know, chicken breast or made some make some beef, I make enough of that that it's going to last for a few days, and then I have lunch for just a few days to take with me. So this makes my day very easy. I pack this in the morning. I take it with me. I have a cooling bag, and all my food goes in there, and I can absolutely control. My calories coming in, my protein coming in, this makes it very easy, overseeable, and saves a lot of money. So this is my current go-to lunch, uh, and it's easy to take this with you. So this is a fairly small plate, obviously, but a low-carb tortilla here with uh, chicken and a little bit of cheese in there, so it's chicken breast. And then um, with that Greek yogurt, about one and a half cups of Greek yogurt, with just a couple of these pieces here of sugar-free uh, chocolate sweetened with uh, stevia. 
This is about 55 grams of protein, 15 grams of carbs, and 15 grams of fat. Number four, stop buying water in plastic bottles. Now, I highly recommend to get an under-sink water filter. If you're on a tight budget, then an activated charcoal filter is fine, in my opinion. But I really would recommend to do the investment and get a reverse osmosis system. And it costs about $300, $350. Um, I am currently using one from Waterdrop. It's called the Waterdrop, Waterdrop D6 reverse osmosis system. I'm not affiliated with them. But I like the system. I've used it for almost two years now. It makes excellent water, tastes fantastic. And the uh, reverse osmosis stages, there are seven stages in one filter in there. They really take out all the junk that you don't want to drink, right? It's much cleaner than uh, plastic bottled water. Now, a replacement filter costs uh, $99. And again, it has all seven stages in there. It's super easy to change. The um, <clears throat> thing is then when you look at the initial investment, it's going to cost you in your first year of buying this thing, it'll be about $30 a month for excellent water. And I would still argue that that's cheaper than uh, buying plastic bottles. But after the uh, first year, you only have to buy the replacement filter. That's $99. So that's roughly $8.25 a month for excellent water. And I think that's a really good investment to do. Then I have a bunch of stainless steel bottles. So when my kids take water to school or we take water to work, we just use stainless steel bottles. Very easy to wash. And this way you have clean water for, I think, a very good price. And this is one of the things where you can pick up otherwise a lot of contaminants on a daily basis. So having clean drinking water is crucial for good health, in my opinion. So we're using a uh, water drop reverse osmosis filter. You can see in the chaos under the sink here, but it's actually very easy to change that filter. You take this thing off and there's one cartridge here. You see, you, you pull that out, comes out as one cartridge. Cartridge lasts really about one year. This is a second cartridge we have in there. It works extremely well. So this is a, something that I think is, is really cool. And it'll show you up here. When you turn this on, it comes with this beautiful little faucet here. So you turn this on. You see, it makes a bit of a humming sound. That's about it. Very good flow, right? And um, each of those lines, so when those lines are gone, you have to change the filter. Each of the lines, the uh, eight lines, is about a month and a half with the way we use it here, a family of four. And that's actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So super clean water, I, th I think that's a very good thing uh, to have. And again, it doesn't take a lot of space because this is just on your sink. And then down here is the unit, size of a uh, small computer, I would say. And number five, do not buy expensive body lotions. Now, most body lotions contain mineral oil, which is made from crude oil, which is, you know, of course, full of toxins and carcinogens. Now, the mineral oil is the result of several chemical steps in a refinery, and it's supposed to be free of toxins and carcinogens, but <laughs> I have real trust issues here. And if you've ever seen an oil refinery, then you will find it very difficult to believe that anything out of this chemical plant is uh, safe to put on your skin or let alone be good for your health, right? So I use organic coconut oil in a glass. Um, the moisturizing properties are not perfect, but if you use this after a shower, it actually works great. I also use coconut oil for my face, but many people have mentioned that, you know, they get breakouts, it clogs their pores. And in that case, I think a small amount of a commercial lotion, like a face lotion is fine, even if it does contain uh, mineral oil as a moisturizer, because we're talking about a very small area of skin here. So I hope this was helpful. I would love to hear what kind of um, steps you take to save money and become healthier. Um, please leave a comment or question. I definitely read those. And a lot of times this gives me ideas for future videos.